Hello, everybody, and I hope you're having a blessed day. Um, I've talked to you before about things that you see on the news, and you can't always uh, depend on it for the truth. Um, what I'm showing you here is a picture of people that are in line at a food bank. There's over 3,000 people there. Now, there's another one out there that uh, shows as many as 10,000 people lined up in cars. They're even standing on top of their cars, and uh, it's to get food. Now, I've said time and time again that we should always be prepared for any kind of interruption. Um, I used to work at Walmart, and I remember many, many years ago when there was a hurricane, uh, orange juice and coffee uh, could not get through. And... It was very frustrating to a lot of people to come into the store and there was no coffee or juices. So even natural disasters can cause shortages and we should always be prepared for any kind of shortage, whether it's intentional, whether it's nature, whatever it may be. Now, I'm not talking about hoarding food. Um, I don't necessarily believe in that sort of thing, but I leave that up to the individual person. Um, but I would not want to be stuck in something like this and, you know, just sit and sit for endless hours to get very little or even things that you might not necessarily even want or use. But I guess if you're hungry enough, I have that old adage, you'll eat anything. But... This is not necessary. It's not. It comes from people that just live for the moment. Now, I'm not saying, don't get me wrong. There are people out there that are so broke, that have such a hard time struggling to get by, that they can't even afford an extra can of anything. And I would say, if you know somebody like that, and you can afford to get them an extra can, please do. Please help someone else if you know. Now, I I personally know people that will go out and they will buy themselves several six-packs and take vacations and do all kinds of things where that money could be put aside to help, you know, put a little extra food into their house, and they won't. So I don't have a whole lot of sympathy for people who do that sort of thing. But there are real genuine people out there, and it's usually the elderly, that struggle to get by day to day when it comes to food. And so those kind of people, I'd say dig in your pocket if you know one, and be generous. Throw an extra bag of rice their way. Throw, you know, an extra couple of cans. Now, try to find out what they like. You know, most people have family. Not all, but most do. And, you know, if you've got a parent and they're elderly and their income is really tight, you know, send a little extra their way. You know, you should know what your parents like in general and the things that they eat and give a little extra to them so they don't have to worry about getting out there and being exposed and how they're going to get by. And open up your hearts to them and help them. Because this is horrible to have to go through. And something like this to get food. We should always be prepared. And what I think that's coming around in November is going to make things a whole lot worse. And you're not going to want to be out there. A lot of people in their states don't want to be out there right now as it is with everything that's going on. And so it's always, please, please, America. Get prepared. It's always better to be prepared than not. It's like I've said many, many times, if having a little extra food is a mistake, well, at least it's a mistake I can eat. You know, I've made a lot of mistakes in my lifetime, and they may not have been beneficial at all. But if this is a mistake, at least it's one that I can eat. And so I ignore those who think it's nonsense or think it's silly, because, you know, I see them make foolish mistakes with their money. And, you know, they can't get anything back from their foolishness. But this is the kind of mistake that's a good one because at least I can eat it. And so 
with what's coming around the corner, we should be able to see it. You know, I don't like to get into a lot of discussions with people because we have a, a culture now that we think that we're right and we must convince everybody else that we're right. And I just don't like those kind of arguments. You know, you, you get into discussions with people and they'll talk about, well, this was intentional and it was this and it was that. And I've always said, you know, if my car ends up in a ditch, I don't sit and tell myself and stand there and look at my car and say, how on earth did this happen? How on? Because it's too late. There's nothing I can do about it. My car's in a ditch. But what I need to do is look at how do I get out of that ditch? Because that's the only thing I can do. And that's the situation we're in right now. There's not a whole lot we can do about what we see going on out there. But we can look at ways to get out of it. And ways that we can protect our family and help our families to get through what's definitely coming. And it's next month. It's coming. Trust me. It's coming and it's going to be ugly and it's going to be bad. And so the less you have to be out there and, you know, protecting yourself even against COVID, the better off it is for you if you can. And, you know, put some away. And, you know, in another video I mentioned about lemons or limes and how you could take honey and pour. It's 32 ounce a bottle of honey it's the bigger bottle and just you know put it in the refrigerator there's another thing you can do with limes I don't like the bottle of lemon juice because it's been pasteurized which means all the vitamins have been killed in it but you can take the limes or lemons and squeeze it into ice trays and freeze it now don't store it in the freezer and anything aluminum store it in plastic containers or plastic bags and you can reconstitute that and you can have for lemonade uh you can have for lemon pie i make lime pie because like i said in my area limes are extremely cheap and so i do freeze a lot of lime and i just squeeze it into ice cube trays and i've even got a recipe where i write down how many cubes i need to make the, you know, I, I can't remember how much a cup of it is, but like, let's say it's a quarter cup of lime juice or lemon juice. I know how many ice cubes it takes to make that. And so I store lime juice that way. There are things you can do. Uh, yams, I, I uh, make sweet potato pie. I don't care for pumpkin and I like sweet potato pie. And so when the yams are on sale, I wrap them up in aluminum foil. I bake them. I have a big toaster oven that's also a rotisserie. And I wrap them up and I put them in there and I bake them until they're done. Then I peel them, mash them, and I measure them out for how, like if it's two cups of sweet potatoes. I measure that out and I put that much into a freezer container. And then I put it in the freezer once it's completely cooled. And so when I want to make sweet potato for Thanksgiving or Christmas, I already have it. The more we have on hand, I, I always beat that Thanksgiving shopping that people are doing because I buy the stuff way ahead of time. I have my green beans on hand, you know, the green bean casserole everybody makes. I have all that stuff on hand way ahead of time. And so I'm not out there chasing everything. Uh, when everybody's out there shopping, when it's packed and the lines are horrible, I have everything on hand. This is already October. Next month is Thanksgiving. And I'm going to go ahead and get a turkey. And I don't necessarily look for it on sale anymore because it's extremely hard in my area to find anything on sale when it comes to turkey. I haven't seen a sale on turkey mm, probably in five or six years. And so, you know, do what you can in stock and put something away because it's coming. Be prepared, people. Be prepared. It's right around the corner. And don't let yourself get caught unprepared. You know what your family needs, and you know what you're short on, and you know what you need to put away. So God bless you.